Welcome back. My name is Jamie with Port St. Lucie Mortgage Brokers. And today we're continuing our conversation with Mindy Hackett from Berkshire Hathaway. Good morning, Mindy. Good morning. How are you today? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for taking the time to return. I know last time we we're cutting short on time and you're sharing so much valuable information. I definitely didn't want to cut off our interview at that point. So well, I thank you for uh, coming back and continuing our conversation and sharing with the audience you know what steps you do to continue your growth and and ensure your success so uh if you want you we could pick up there and and uh continue where we left off last time yeah for sure um so i guess i would start by uh, explaining how um berkshire hathaway which i've been with for quite some time um it used to be prudential and um it was purchased the Re prudential real estate franchise was purchased by berkshire hathaway way back but anyway one of the philosophies that they um teach us which i've always worked by was this forever agent idea that you know we're more of a consultant than we are an agent meaning that we put people's best interest at heart and um we're not doing this just to try to rack up transactions we want to do right by people so that they return to us and so that they send their friends and family and neighbors to us and um, we do right by everybody. And so, um, you know, it's very important to me, for instance, when I go to a listing appointment, you know, I want to make sure that whoever I'm working with um, has a plan for where to go and what they're going to do. And um, I want to make sure that selling their home is the right thing for them um you know a lot of times i'll say okay well you know are you sure because you know let's say you bought your house you know i don't know three four years ago and your interest rate is three something you know are you sure you want to give that up right now um because that's a very valuable thing and so i just want to make sure when i meet with people that whatever they're doing is the best thing for them and where are they going to go and what the plan is from there because i'd never want to put someone in a situation where oh you want to sell your house to get 50 grand out of it okay well you know look at where rentals are right now did you go over that at all with anyone because you know a, a two-bedroom apartment is twenty two hundred dollars a month in some places you know or let's say 18 to twenty two hundred a month you know um, your mortgage payments, $1,900 or something. Do you really want to give that up? So I just like people to, to make really good and well-informed decisions because I never want to put someone in a bad position or, or have any regret about any decisions that they've made. Uh, so that's very important to me. And the same thing, you know, with buyers, um, you know, even though let's say someone might be approved for a $3,500 a month mortgage payment, that doesn't mean that they want a $3,500 a month mortgage. You know, let's look at your family and how you spend your money. And are you going to be comfortable with that? You know, or are you going to have to make sacrifices? Will you be able to save money? Um, you know, we, me personally, you know, I want what's best for people. And um, that's how I've always run my business. That's how I will continue to run my business. And you know, I truly believe that's why I would guess about 80% of my business is uh, repeat business and referrals from people that I know because they know that I'm going to sit down and tell them the truth. Yeah. And real estate is a referral business. I mean, yeah. you know, not only are you going to get, you know, the hope is to get them to come back if they ever need that service, but more importantly, their friends and family, right? And their neighbors and things like that, that they, they could... Uh, refer you out to so right uh, absolutely and, 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 and now, uh, go ahead a, a real estate transaction one of the, the honestly one of the hardest parts about this job for me besides keeping up on marketing um and paperwork is um you know you really buying a home is is a huge life event and you know when you're going around showing houses to people you really learn a lot about their family and what's important to them and how many clothes people have and just all kinds of random stuff and you, you what their lifestyle's like what's important and you get really close with people and what's so hard for me is that it's hard to find the time for me to go ahead and and reconnect with these people again and check in um um 
and and see uh how things are going and and that's something that i really truly wish i had more time for because you have no idea how many times in a day i'll drive past a neighborhood and say oh i wonder how they're doing i hope they really like it there and you know um um and i have been blessed with having the best nicest clients i've barely had any crazies so <laughs> you know i I um, really genuinely care about these people and I just wish I had more time to follow up or drop by or, you know, so that's yeah. something that, you know, I'm going to try to work on in the future. Um, if I ever find the right partner to, uh, in my business. Um, but yeah, that's, that's honestly the hardest part for me is, you know, mm -hmm. that I just don't have enough free time to say hi to everyone that I really want to. Yeah. So, I mean, not only is it, so basically what you're saying is it's not only important to establish that relationship, but to also um, let that relationship flourish by staying in contact with them and things like that. Obviously not to the point where you would want it to be uh, because of right. your time schedule, but um, yeah, absolutely. I, I, and you know, sometimes, so I personally have a follow-up. I try to do a follow-up 30 days after closing and, uh -huh. six, and you know gently at least six months out uh and then try to depending on the client and their needs every six months after that um and sometimes i call the client you know six months later and they haven't even heard of the realtor you know they haven't called or followed up with them and you know sometimes they share that with me so what you're saying it's easy to say yeah i do that but really the practice of it is 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 harder and you know I could see that that's, you know, one of the things that you do to, to be successful and grow that relationship. So, yeah, you know, it's something that I literally, it's the one thing that I, I regret not being able to do on a daily basis, but, you know, most of my time is so consumed with um, current buyers and sellers um, yeah. and getting everything done the right way for them and giving them full attention that, um, um, you know, that's one of the things that I really let slip, which, which I shouldn't it, because I do genuinely care deeply for all these people. And when they call me, Hey, how you been? I I'm so happy to hear from them, you know, and, and I need to do better at that. That's definitely one thing, um, that I could do better at. Okay. Um, so, but that doesn't mean I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody's got a life and it, and it gets busy it's it's a you know everybody's you know it's, we live in a very fast-paced world right now yeah. and i think we all no matter what industry you're in real estate mortgage whatever it is you know i don't think none of us follow up as much as we may have should let's say or really want to um right but but oh, you started I, want to. I just don't right. have the time <laughs> right Right. Uh -huh. And so you started the conversation by saying, you know, try to be upfront and talk, uh, you know, uh, tell clients really what, how you try to guide them to what's best for them. Um, right. One of the things that we talked about before jumping onto the call was this, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, date the rate by marry the house. What do you think about yeah, that? Marry the house, date the rate. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, I was telling you and it, well, we often agree on things, <laughs> but I was telling you how I found that to be so obnoxious because we don't, you know, that was the whole, um, um, little tagline, a lot of realtors all over the country were using, um, you know, to, to encourage people to buy homes because the interest rates are going down. Right. Um, supposedly because it's an election year and because inflation is going to go back down and this and that. But quite honestly, you know, nobody can predict that. And so those words never left my mouth. I thought that they were quite obnoxious. Um, and you agreed because we don't know what's going to happen. And, um, you know, it doesn't make sense to um, push something like that, that, if it doesn't happen, how disappointed is someone going to be, you know, because like I said before, if someone, let's say is approved for a $3,500 a month mortgage, but you know, they have a lot of hobbies and kids and sports and whatever, and they really can only afford 2,800. Well, that's, you know, that's their family, that's their life. So I'm not going to put them 
in a situation where in two years this is going to adjust to a payment that they don't want or can't afford. So I'd rather have someone buy what they can afford based on this rate right now um, and be financially comfortable than rely on something that may or may not happen when you're making your decisions. Yeah. And I completely understand. I kind of cringe anytime I've, whenever I've ever heard that buy rate, I can't, I can't even say it correctly, which I actually I'm happy about because that means <laughs> I, I, I've not said it out loud enough times. So, um, I've but, read but, it so many times. <laughs> oh, I've heard it. I've heard it. I just don't repeat it. Um, There's memes on Facebook and Instagram that real. I, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's and, that's the difference between a real estate agent and a real estate consultant. You know, true. A real estate agent is out to just do the deal, you know, and, and a consultant is someone who's there for you to help you make the best decision. And that's how I view yeah. myself. Yeah. And I look and I remember the rates started. They started increasing the rates. I think it was March, April 2022. Mm -hmm. And I remember even in the mortgage industry, everyone was a hundred percent sure come march of 2024 i'm sorry that was in 2022 that come march of 2023 last year that the mm -hmm. rates were going to be lower or stabilize or you know but below four or five percent like i heard that so often and i and i'm like you know these things don't play like you know we're in the this world that everything's really fast so we expect things to happen really quickly and mm -hmm. I looked at that and I was like, that ain't going to happen that fast. And people are like, yeah, just buy now, refinance tomorrow. And I'm like, how about if the rates keep going up? And and look, uh, to that, I mean, the rates have actually increased. Are they a mm -hmm. little bit below the the high? Yes, they're, they're below the, I think it hit like 8% or close to that. But um, we're definitely below that today. But even at that point, it still doesn't make sense to refinance. And if you did, it really wouldn't benefit you all that much today to refinance. Now, will that change? 100% that will change. The, pro the problem is the timing. I don't know if it's yeah. six months, a year, five years, and these things could last longer than, than a client may be able to afford paying that high payment. So we don't want to put them in that position, hoping that they could you know, outlive these higher rates. Right. Well, I mean, look, at you know, not only are, let's say, um, there, there's worldwide factors that affect our economy that we have no control over. And so without getting into politics, um, you know, if, if we're printing a bunch of money to deal with a bunch of foreign wars and issues overseas, um, regardless of what you believe in them, that's what or what you believe about them, that's what's happening right now. And inflation isn't tapering off like we thought it would. And and those are completely external factors outside of our country that our country's decided to, you know, um in, in yep. and and um you know we have no control over that. So um, you know, it is what it is. But I never wanted to promise someone something that was that may or may not happen. So, Mindy, I know that before we jumped on the recording, I know we also talk, touched on other things that you um, ensure that you do or cover with the client, like maybe expenses that may increase mm -hmm. uh, or they might not be seen at, uh, today going into the purchase. Do you, did you want to touch on that? Yeah, for sure. So, um, basically... Um, one thing that's very important that I discuss with every client is not just what the taxes are right now on this property or on this MLS sheet. It's what the taxes are going to be when they adjust. So, you know, if someone bought a house in 1994 and their taxes right now might be $1,600 a year, um, if that house is worth $400,000, guess what? Your taxes are going to be in the high sevens to low eights, depending on whether or not you're homesteading the property. So let's go over the mortgage calculator and see that for the rest of this year, your your mortgage payment might be, you know, X dollars because the taxes are only this much. But next year, the payment's going to increase by, let's say, you know, four or five, six hundred dollars. Um depending on the, the property and the situation. And I 
explicitly make sure to go over that with everybody. Um, now, what's great is that real estate is a hedge against inflation. Um, and um, what you're doing if you're buying a house right now is you're ensuring, you know, that payment is going to be relatively the same um, for the life of the loan. And the only factor um, that um, can change very much is the insurance. But other than that, um, you know, when you homestead, your taxes can only go up a maximum of 3% a year. If it's not a homestead property, it's a maximum of 10%. After that, that first, after, sorry to interrupt, but after that first initial change, because there, yes. there will be that change. Right. Um, so, um, so there's that, that's really important. Um, insurance is really important. Um, you know, right now the insurance on newer homes is much less than some of the older homes and that that's a benefit to some people and can get you a little more buying power actually um but you know for instance um i live in an 1800 square foot new construction house and my insurance is 1100 something a year um wow. same size house built in 2005 you might be looking at i don't know 1800 to 2200 something like that depending on where you are maybe more um and um you know let, let's say the house is 30 years old you might be approaching the 3000 range on that um, yeah, and the crazy part about that is that even a 2000 you buy a house in 2006 2007 with the original roof that's not what you would consider an old house i mean it still looks like a newer home and and everything usually you know well kept it it, it looks good but that insurance you know you might come in low right now you might get a low premium let's say but two three years down the road that that roof went from okay to old now you're you know you're 15 20 years into the roof you you may start having some rate increases or you know uh, unfortunately even get dropped by your insurance agent um that so that's an expense. situation is, is absolutely absurd to be honest with you um <laughs> but it's true and it's so when when i actually you know start working with a buyer um i tell them i say hey listen you know back in uh 2004 and 2005 there was a building boom but also in those years that was there were two hurricanes that came through one year after yeah. the other and because of that the large majority of the roofs in this town were replaced in that time period so please know that it's very likely that unless otherwise noted in the listing, you're going to have to be planning on replacing the roof in the next few years. Right. And so depending on someone's situation, if that's something where they're like, well, I'm not going to be able to save up 20 grand in the next two years, um, you know, and I don't want to finance it. Well, then we got to look for something with a newer roof or, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at, um, if there's any opportunities in new construction in your price range. Um, but, you know, I people need to be prepared for that. I mean, even right now I'm hearing that, uh, oh gosh, what, let me think, you know, back in let's say 2018 or so, all of a sudden I'm at my home inspections and I'm starting to hear about uh, four point on homes that are over 30 years old, right? Um, and I said, you know, wow, that's, that's, crazy and then you know we would do wind mitigations on homes typically that were um um uh, older than 2001 and a half where where the um building code changed and hurricane shutters became um um standard on every house they had to be put on every house in this area incidentally not up in more northern areas of florida but here they're required and so, um, but then, you know, now go to two years ago and now I'm hearing, oh, we need four points on homes that are 20 years old, which yep. was very surprising to me because a 20 year old home, you know, was built in 2004. It, it's, that's practically brand new. So, yep. um, you know, but insurance is definitely something to consider. That's the one outlying issue that um i worry about just because i'd hate 
for people to be priced out of um, affording their homes. And it's possible. I mean, I've seen it happen in some places. Um, but I yeah. hate to see that continue to happen. And that's something that's going to need to be taken into consideration when you're buying your home. Because if you're really maxed out right now and uh, on what the payment is, then next year when the if the taxes and insurance go up you know what are you going to do so you know if if you're worried about that then i think you should definitely leave a buffer zone um in, in your purchase price yep yeah so um i usually encourage and I, look I, this only you know how they say you, you only learn by 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 getting hurt or whatever the saying goes but you know, I had I had buyers that would go out shopping, and this happened. I, I would say probably at the beginning of last year, kind of mid of last year, where there was a streak of buyers that would go out there and and find the property. On the surface, everything looked fine, and then in the process, already filed, submitted, and going through the pur purchase process, they got their insurance quote. Mm -hmm. And I was getting these eleven thousand dollar insurance, fifteen thousand, like ridiculous amounts, which would then basically the buyers like I ain't buying that, right? There's no way I'm buying that either. There was an issue with the roof or even electrical. I came across a couple of those, but um, so I've I've since encouraged my what I learned was you know that's a really good step to take before you go and you know go through the actual buying process or the application process, you know, is get that's, a that's quote. difficult because, um, I'll, first of all, what's really funny is that I'll often ask, uh, listing agents if we're getting into a position of writing an offer, Hey, do you know what they're paying for insurance? And, and a lot of times the answer is, Oh, it's just in their mortgage. They don't even really know. Okay. Right. Wouldn't you want to know? I mean, anyway, and then um, um, I there are some corridors of, let's say, um, the US one corridor in Hope Sound and South Stort, where the insurance, depending on where you are, has gotten extremely high. Um, and, and I've heard numbers uh, in the, you know, six to 12,000 range down there, um, which, you know, we're looking at some older homes and, you know, higher value homes that are um, large square footage or close to the water, but not in a flood zone. Um, but for some reason, insurance companies don't like that little corridor down there right now. Um, even though, um, you know, I've looked on the um, flood map and the evacuation zone map and they're not in evacuation zones and they're not in flood zones. They're just absurdly high because they're near the coast um so that that's been been interesting as well but i'm really hoping that there's some kind of reform that can get insurance here in florida back under control because i hate to see really good hard-working people priced out of living somewhere that they love i think that's really sad yeah and look and, and i think it also plays a factor that these prices of homes have increased so yeah. you know my home if i bought it for 150 again not today when i bought it for 150 or whatever that number was you know uh that buyer if they buy it for 150 their insurance is going to be you know on the high end two to three thousand that's like whoa but that same home is now worth three four five even six you know even higher than that's in some you know sometimes but now you're insuring you know a replacement of a hurricane were to come and destroy that home or a fire now the insurance company has to fork over four thousand or i mean four hundred thousand or five hundred thousand so right not only the rate is a high but just the price is uh the, the replacement price value. Point. yeah the replacement um, value is high so um yeah and so what i was going to say is it's another thing that's difficult is i'll i'll call my insurance agents up right and say hey um, what do you think about the numbers on this house, right? And and a lot of them don't want to give a quote without a wind mit and a four point, um, or a wind mitigation report to clarify, or a four point inspection, um, because you could run numbers on something mm -hmm. 
without those items and come up with 8,000, but then you do a wind mitt and a four point, maybe it comes down to 3,500, you know? Right. So they don't want to misquote you. And the other issue that that's come up quite a bit too, is just that um, it, it's very difficult to, to, I guess, run a quote for citizens. Um, so a lot of them like to avoid doing that unless they have to, because it takes a lot of time. It consumes a lot of time to get a quote from citizens, I guess. But furthermore, if you are going to go with citizens for your insurance, the um, insurance agent either A, has to approve that no other insurance company will touch it, or B, that the um, insurance cost is it's either 20 or 25 percent. They have to show that citizens is either 20 or 25 percent less than where these two other companies are coming in. So you need to prove to them um, there's a lot of hoops to jump through to even get citizens. Yeah. And so a lot of, uh, you know, my insurance and some agents won't even write a policy with them because they don't want to take the time. I guess they don't pay as well as some of the other carriers which, you know, I can understand that. I do have a, an agent um, who I work with that um, will run them for my clients because if needed, because I give him a lot of business. So he's happy to do it uh, for my clients. But um, yeah, that's just, it's, I agree that that should be something that's obtainable to do upfront because it is a huge issue and it right. certainly affects someone's debt to income ratio uh, very much. Um, but it is difficult to try to get that up front. I agree. And I've seen them change. But again, I, I think the point I was trying to make on that was just the, the earlier, the better, because yeah. you don't want to well, find out halfway through the process. And I have buyers, and I'm sorry, I have buyers that get it to me a week before closing after I've asked for it a thousand times. And I'm like, you know, now it's whatever it is, it's, you know, most likely they're going to take it because at this point they've already got the u haul out there. You know what I mean? Like, so well, again, I what try I to, like to do is, guide is them. Absolutely. What I really like to do and what I recommend to all of my buyers is let's get our quote in our inspection period before you spend the money on your appraisal. So, you know, the most home inspectors will, will, are able to yep. do a wind mitt and a four point for you in the inspection period. Um, yep. So we get that in the first you know couple days there. We submit it to the insurance company before the end of the inspection period. We get a quote back, and then, you know, then we know before they're spending more money what's going on, and and that is something that I really encourage all my buyers to do. Same here. All right, so we'll we'll move on from insurance because we could beat this horse to death here. Because oh, I'm done. It's a, insurance. Insurance. <laughs> insurance is a dead horse. All right. Um, we talked about the cost for taxes, um, mm -hmm. and I'll even expand that because I'll, I'll put cost in general. And I'll start by saying, you know, insurance itself is not the insurance cost itself is not the deterrent to buy a house. Taxes itself is not the deterrent to buy a house, right? Not even the combination of those two, even though those two are high, it may mm -hmm. not be the deterrent to buy a house. But when you talk about inflation, now, you know, your grocery go, goes from, you know, $200 a week to $500 a week and your car payment went from $350 to $750 and now you increase the insurance. So inflation by itself has played a, a, obviously a big factor in all of this and in, in, in all aspects of all our lives. Right. And the crazy thing about inflation is even if you know we hear inflation is going up inflation even if inflation went down to zero that basically means that prices stayed the same and over right. the long term that's great but that doesn't do much for me today because i'm still paying i'm still paying a lot of money compared to my income for whatever that service or product i'm buying you know that right. got affected already right so it doesn't mean that even if inflation goes to zero doesn't mean that the, the home value comes down or your car value comes down no it's the same your insurance right. it's the same so uh in saying that uh, because of these expenses and because everything's getting ex uh uh cost cost more uh with time what are some mm -hmm. of the things we touched on taxes but what are you know if you want to touch on taxes or maybe anything else that you guide your your buyer on 
you know, things to foresee in the future to to hedge against, right? Like that they might oh, have yeah. an expense. So, I, so buying a home is is a hedge against inflation. So, you know, let's say you bought your home. Obviously, the market went up uh, exponentially over the last few years. So it's it's hard to use it as an example. But let's just say you bought a home in I don't know 2014 um, to 2018 or 19, and let's say your mortgage payment, including taxes, insurance, and and everything was, you know, $2,000 a month, right? Well, now you're sitting really pretty because, um, you know, people are paying, I don't know, $3,000 or $3,500 a month right now to, to either rent the same house that you're paying $2,000 a month for um, or, or to purchase a home, you know, with rates where they are and prices where they are. Um, so as time goes on in the future, it might seem right now like, oh, wow, you know, 2800 a month or 3000 a month is a lot of money um, for a mortgage. But I'll tell you what, in 20 years, you, you'll be really glad that you did it because, you know, the only thing that's going to go up more than 3% a year is possibly your insurance. But everything else is going to, you know, your principal and interest payment is going to remain the same. So, you know, you're basically securing a payment for your future yeah and mortgages and, and i'm sorry mortgages generally speaking that's the benefit of it because oh, today sure. you might get a mortgage and the payment's two thousand dollars and uh, and it might be a lot right compared to your income at that time with regular inflation we're not even talking about hyperinflation or the crazy inflation we've had over the last year um by even a regular what they want two percent standard inflation increase year to year as that grows and and incomes uh track that you know in, in five years although your payment's still two thousand dollars it has now gotten easier for you to pay um, yeah. we hear you know we hear a lot of stories like man i i remember when i bought my first house and my payment was five hundred dollars and i at that time i didn't even know how i was going to pay that and now you're like right. 500 now you know it's funny now right but at that yeah. time when they bought it in you know i don't know 80 something uh why did i ever it, move it was a lot. <laughs> yeah exactly so 100 uh, what what are some i'm sorry you could finish what you were going to say i no that was about it you, you um it. any other things as far as expenses go that you try to guide your by i know the roof like hey your roof is from you know 18 years old whatever the you know you could expect that to be an expense anything else that we um that you could share that you look out for yeah just you know before we even do a home inspection you know i've i've gone to i don't know how many hundreds of home inspections over 18 years and i have learned a lot thanks to the wonderful and thorough and knowledgeable home inspectors that i use um and so i take that knowledge with me into looking at a house right and so I can look on an AC and you know, I'd say 90% of them have the manufacturer date on it. So, so we know how long the AC is going to last. Um, you know, I know what to look for as far as what to be concerned about and not to be concerned about when it's a um, cosmetic issue versus a structural issue in general. Obviously, I'm not mm -hmm. a general contractor, but I know enough to point out, well, this might be concerning or it might not, you know, do, whatever. Um, so, you know, before we write an offer, um, you know, we want to look at the roof age. Um, we want to look at the age of the AC. Water heater is kind of hard to determine. You can just sort of like eyeball it um, because the manufacturer's my, <laughs> dates are. My, my water heater has been dying for 10 years. It's been on its lag leg. It doesn't die. Nice. <laughs> I don't know. But, hey, sometimes yeah, so it's harder. Start I mean, you learn, I learn new stuff every day. Sometimes they'll start leaking a little bit and then like they'll calcify and, and rust, not rust. What's the word? I don't know. Like they'll, they'll seal themselves. So they'll start leaking and then seal themselves. So who knows? Yeah. Uh, what I do know is that the older something is, the longer it lasts. So if you have a <laughs> hot water heater from 1962, it'll probably last longer than um, a water heater you buy today. Well, but, they were probably built better too. Yeah, Back but anyway, <laughs> just going into a home inspection, 
you know, or, or viewing a property before we even do an inspection and write an offer. When I look at a house, I am looking at all of the possible expenses you're going to be incurring and um, or what might need to be replaced soon after you purchase the house. But primary focus is always on on the roof right now, just with what's going on with the insurance companies. But it's very important. I mean, I, I would hate to have someone spend, you know, $500 on a home inspection or $600, you know, and um, to find something out that they weren't going to be cool with that I could have told them, you know, so it's really important to me to, to look over the house, look for any issues, um, and point out any issues or possible issues, just because if someone doesn't have a lot of cash on hand, then they're not going to want to take on certain issues. So it's really important for me to, to make sure that I'm not wasting anyone's money on a home inspection that shouldn't have happened. Perfectly said. Um, we'll, we'll keep moving. We're going to, let's go to our rant that we kind of left yeah. off. We teased about it last time on the, the right. last episode, um, which was how we're all going to be replaced with, uh, by AI and, you know, this future uh, interview will be done by robots because we won't be needed anymore. So, in our, yeah. but <laughs> um, so I know you definitely had some thoughts about if and how and why it would or wouldn't uh, be possible to or easily replace a real estate agent. So I wanted to uh, let you rant. Well, and, I think. Well, there was there was a, a an article that got me thinking about this. Not that I haven't been over the um, past year and a half or two years anyway thinking about it, but it was just a, I saw a brief article somewhere I don't even remember where about how some real estate firm was developing AI chatbots to um, get buyer information and then feed that information to agents. Um, creating a profile for the buyer. So basically it was like a chat bot asking them a bunch of questions and then they send this form to the agent before they would, I guess, call the buyer and talk to them. And I thought that was such a huge waste of time. I mean, for me, right, um, there is nothing more annoying or frustrating to me <laughs> than A, typing online with a chat bot uh, you know, for a product or service or be calling um, a, somewhere and and answering questions to, a, you know, voice <laughs> bot or whatever. That is. Which usually ends make, in me screaming into the phone. Yeah. If you want to make my blood <laughs> boil, make that my only way to contact you. Um, and I guarantee you, I would cancel whatever business I have with you if that was my only way to connect with you. But um, it's very frustrating. and. Um, you know, it's just buying a home is not only a financial decision, it's a very emotional decision, too. I'd say they're equally weighed, right? Um, and there's so many things that go into understanding people's wants and needs and their personality and what's important to them that I don't think AI could ever truly understand that about people. And usually... Um, you know, by the time I show about six houses to, to people, I figure out what they want. I just know it in my heart or in my soul or in my gut, like what's going to work for them or what might be a good fit for them. And um, I don't think a chat bot or a robot or uh, would really be able to um, understand that. Um, yeah. And one example of that that's happened a couple time over a couple times over the years um, because let's just say you do have AI sending you houses to look at and then you pick which houses you want to look at and then they send some agent out to meet you or whatever that's getting paid oh, it's a different way than, you know, as a commission or whatever, but maybe hourly or whatever. Well, there have been a, many times over the years where I just knew someone was going to like something. So I had these buyers, this was way back in the day, let's say 2010, and they're looking for a large house in Palm City. And they were having a really hard time making a decision. There was a lot of inventory back then. And I kept, you know, every time we're going to go out to show property, um, even though I had them on automatic email, I still would sit down and pull up everything that matched their criteria. And every time I kept sending them this one house and I would mention it, um, why don't we go look at this house? And they, they never put it on their list. I mean, probably three, four times I put this house on their list and they never picked it. 
So finally, one day we were just looking at one or two houses and I said, listen, um, I have a surprise for you. We're going to go look at this house today. You keep turning it down, but I think you're going to like it. I have a feeling about it. Let's go look at it. And um, we went and looked at that house and um, those people still live there today. Wow. Um, yeah, that's a perfect example. Yeah. Or um, another example, I had a client, uh, I don't know, maybe about a year and a half, two years ago. And they came down. I got a really good feeling about what was it. You know, I know all the floor plans in town, not all of them, but I, you know, a lot of them. I know the builders. I know, um, you know, if you if if you covered my eyes and and walked me into a house and opened them, I could probably tell you within two years what year the house was built, just based on you know the floor plan or whatever. Um, you know, I've been doing this so long, and so I had these people come down, and um, they really liked. Um, they were only here for a weekend, but they have some friends that live here, right? And from what I learned from them over that weekend, I said, okay, you guys need one of these 90s houses with the big, with the pass-through kitchen, pass, and so a pass-through to the patio and the big, huge screen porch. Because the newer homes, um, I swear that, you know, in 2005 and four, when all those homes were built, that they were a little smaller than the patios in the 90s. And now if you look at the patios today, unless you're buying one of the more high end luxury homes uh, or, you know, let's say over the 550 price point, they, they tend to have smaller ha uh, patios. Right. And so there was this house and I knew the floor plan. It was in uh, I think it was a tropical home um, build and the house had been redone on the inside to their colors and to their liking. But the outside hadn't been touched. Right. And their friends drove by the house and and mixed the house for them. And I, I I said to them, I said, listen, I really want to override this. Let's go. Um, I'll show, you know, they can come look at the house with me. We'll do a video tour. Um, and so their friend met me there. We did the video tour. They loved the house. It's just the outside, you know, needed paint and the driveway needed paint. And they hadn't gotten to the landscaping yet. So it looked terrible from the outside but the inside was great and it was exactly what they wanted all white nicely redone and they bought the house they didn't even come down until after they closed on it and they love it and they're thrilled and um you know i don't think that a robot or an inexperienced agent for that matter has those type of abilities um yeah absolutely i think look it's not to poo poo AI. I'm sure it's going to have a lot of value in a lot of different ways that not only will help, hopefully, our, our, our industry, but probably things around the world. But the truth is, you can't change, you can't replace that human touch. You can't yeah. replace knowing someone is, you know, uh, they might have a disability right a specific disability that you could walk into a house and you're like the minute you walk in and there's steps or it's too inclined or something yeah. you're going to be able to identify like hey this this house as uh, even though it's perfect it may not work because of this situation tailored to your situation right and then you right. know they can make a decision but you're going to be able to pick up on those little things uh their right. taste right uh they like having you know just whatever it is but um you're going to be able to, because that human interaction that you've had with them which will never be able to get input it into a system right like you're never going to put input you know they have a child that does this or likes that you know right. what's how you know it just does not happen like that won't happen so it's going to be something that you're going to know personally from them that you will when you're looking for houses that may fit their you know that might fit their budget let's say you're going to be able to narrow it down to things that are going to fit their lifestyle yeah well and another example that i would go over on, on this is that um uh data for example right um ai might it would only be operating off of data so one one thing that you know I actually am, look, am I, am I happy when I've got a buyer that's putting 
20% down and the desktop appraisal comes out and they say we're waiving the appraisal because you have an 800 credit score and you're putting 20% down, does that make things easier for me and them? And does it save them six, $700? Yeah. But at the same time, um, there's some nuances that data may not pick up on. And, um, you know, if you're using some sort of automated system to value a property. So for, or even a human system for that matter. So for example, something that maybe uh, an automated system wouldn't pick up on. Um, you know that little pocket of homes that's west of 95 off of the Crosstown uh, that you can access from Fairgreen? Yeah. Well, Maybe across the street from Publix, like that, across yep. the way. Yep. Yep. Just a little down from there. I actually did so, an open house there recently. Yep. I completely okay. understand. So then you're probably aware that that area is a little enclave or pocket of homes that is very consistently well maintained with a very high pride of ownership right and um i had a listing out there um, several years ago and um i valued the property taking you know my comps only from that little pocket right because it was a little enclave and whatever now the appraiser took his comps from outside that area on the other side of 95 and technically they were okay because they were within a mile radius right but the property didn't appraise so i said hmm, how can i how can i quantifiably prove to this appraiser that he's wrong because this is a very highly desirable area especially since they opened it up to the uh, access the crosstown parkway so i thought about it and i said oh i got it I um I went ahead and I took land sales from the last couple months in that area as opposed to the area where he had taken his comps from. And incidentally, those land sales were coming in $15,000 higher in that little enclave of homes than on the other side of 95. Now, this was maybe back in, I don't know, 2018 or 19. And so I submitted that information to the um, lender who then submitted it to the appraiser and they did um, go ahead and um, take that into consideration and they adjusted the value up, not the full $15,000, but they adjusted it up 10. I don't really fully awesome. understand why when I had plenty of proof for that, but whatever. <laughs> but things like things like that where you know you're using um you know okay it's got to be within a mile radius it's got to be within 20 percent of the age it's got to be 20 percent of the size and 20 percent of the lot size boom you know but that doesn't always fit every case so um again that's something where you know ai would have failed those sellers you know yeah and it's funny because it, it kind of brings us back to the beginning of the conversation. Everything that you just said is why you're successful, right? Thank you. Um, you know, knowing your area, knowing your market, knowing the value, thinking outside the box. Um, it just, it was perfectly said. So I wanted to touch on that, but, uh, going to AI, going back to AI, you know, I don't think at least our generation and this industry have anything to worry about the next ones that's their problem we'll see right but yeah. um I, I think what you just said is the all the reasons why we won't be replaced and you know we have a good you know foreseeable successful uh future bright future yeah. in our industry so uh with that i know we've gone a little bit over our time is there anything that you wanted to share before uh, to close out yeah i think just to touch a little bit on what you just said is, you know, if you're going to be relying on AI or um, let's say not using a real estate agent for your transaction, you're really leaving yourself open to wasting money, making bad decisions, you know, um, maybe not valuing a property properly. You know, I mean, if you're going by your Z estimate, you know, <laughs> and, and trying to sell your property yourself, you know, you, you could be off by 20, 30,000, 40,000, $50,000, who knows? Um, or, you know, just by following the right steps and the right order in, in today's climate, um, you know, by, by getting your, 
insurance policy during your inspection period. Um, these types of things uh, are so crucial to, to the transaction and just just to have someone to make sure that you're making all the right moves and who's there ready to solve problems when they pop up. I mean, you, I could talk for hours about all the, you know, that appraisal is one story, but I mean, I've got crazy stories you would never believe um, of, of situations that have come up that, that I've worked through and still close the transaction. And, you know, someone who hasn't been doing this for 18 years and is trying to do it on their own, good, you know, good yeah. luck. <laughs> and that that's why, you know, one of the reasons why this real estate lawsuit thing I think is absurd because a really good agent really earns that commission and, yeah. um, you know, is truly a consultant. You know, if you truly have a consultant who really cares about you, they're worth it. Um, they're worth I ensuring agree. your future and helping you to make good decisions. So um, I, I, I think that's a good place to to wrap that whole thing up. Perfect. What is the best way? For the audience to reach you uh if they're interested if they just want to reach out to you to pick your brain uh or if they're looking maybe to list a home or buy what how could uh what's the best way for them to uh get a hold of you or prefer Absolutely. Method? um uh the and best way to reach me is to either call or text me at 772-579-3629 i'll say it again slowly like my mom taught me 772 <laughs> five seven nine three six two nine or you can email me at realtor mindy at live.com perfect and i actually have that already linked in the previous video both of those uh -huh. that and uh, i will do it on this video so if you need to get a hold of her you just uh look below and uh you'll see her contact information and again mindy i appreciate your time i appreciate you coming back uh i know we have a future video to do that I'm mm -hmm. going to hold you to. We're going to do a, a little bit of the market report, uh, review the market report for March uh, for the St. Lucie County, for St. Lucie County. And um, and I'm sure uh, we'll, we'll make more after that. So again, Mindy, thanks again. And we'll talk soon. I'll leave My you with pleasure. that. It's always super fun talking with you. And I hope for people that uh, maybe aren't in, in, in real estate, they got some value out of this and it wasn't too boring. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't for me so <laughs> yeah me too all right well have a great day and i'll talk to you soon talk to you later bye-bye all right bye everyone